Hey, and welcome to this lesson on alternate angles. Our essential questions for the lesson, what are alternate interior angles, and what are alternate exterior angles? By the end of the, the lesson, you should be able to understand the relationship of intersecting lines and the angles formed when lines are cut by a transverse. From now on, we're going to look at a specific situation and mainly focus on when two lines are crossed by a transversal. What happens there? There are two intersections and a total of eight angles formed. So in each intersection, there are four angles. The two lines that are cut by the transversal may or may not be parallel. It depends. Now when two lines meet, the angles that fall on opposite sides of the transversal, which is this line right here, If there's a pair of angles and they are on opposite sides of the transversal, they are considered alternate angles. These two angles that I just drew are alternate. And these two angles that I just drew are alternate. They are on alternate sides of the transversal. Or opposite sides. Interior angles are the four angles that are on the inside of the two lines that are being crossed by the transversal. So for example, num angle one here, angle two, angle three, and angle four. Those are all interior because they're on the inside of the two lines that are cut by the transversal. Similarly, exterior angles are the four angles on the outside or the exterior lines that are being crossed by the transversal. So in this diagram, angle seven is an exterior angle. Angle eight is an exterior angle. Angle five is an exterior angle. And angle six is an exterior angle. Now we're gonna use um, the term alternate and interior to define a specific angle pair that is formed when two lines are crossed by a transversal. So that particular pair is the pair of angles on the opposite sides of the transversal, so alternate, but inside the two lines, interior. So they are called alternate interior angles. Here we have a diagram. On the diagram, the, the two angles with the same color shading are alternate interior. Notice the transversal here. This line I'm highlighting in green is the transversal. Notice how angle A and angle D are on opposite sides, but they're still on the inside of the two lines. Same with angle B and angle C, that, that's another pair. Angle B and angle C, both still on the inside and on uh, opposite sides of the transversal. So, interior, alternate interior angles. In this diagram, it's angle C and angle B, that's one pair of alternate interior angles. And angle A and angle D. So there's two pairs that are formed. Now we have the alternate interior angles theorem. A lot of long word, a lot of words there, very wordy, but it's simply the theorem when dealing with alternate interior angles. And it states that when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the resulting alternate interior angles are congruent. So if two lines are cut by a transversal, the resulting alternate interior angles are congruent. So, uh, in this diagram I have angle 2 
an angle 8 and I also have angle 5 and angle 3. If K if K and L like K and line L if they're parallel then that means angle 2 are congruent and angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. And I'm going to walk through a quick theorem about why that's true. Why we how we can how can we prove that? First, since K is parallel, then by the corresponding angles postulate, angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. So that means oops. So that means we can mark it with the same marking. That means they're congruent. Angle 1 and angle 5. Therefore, by the definition of congruent angles, the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 5. That's what it means to be for two angles to be congruent, is that they have the same measure. So measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 5. And since angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair, they are sup supplementary. So the measure of angle 1 and angle 2 is 180 degrees because they form an angle pair. Also, the measure of angle 5 and angle 8 are supplementary. So they add to 180 degrees as well. Now, since the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 5, instead of writing the measure of angle 5, I can substitute the measure of angle 1 instead. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 8 equals 180 degrees. That's true because angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent. So I can do that. Now some subtracting the measure of angle 1 from both sides, we have that the measure of angle 8 is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle 1. If we do that for both equations, we will get the same answer. We'll get the measure of angle 8 is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle 1. And we'll get that the measure of angle 2 is also 180 degrees minus M, or sorry, minus the measure of angle 1. So, because the measure of angle 8 and the measure of angle 2 are equal, that means congruent. And you can prove the same for the other two alternate interior angles as well. Now we're going to talk about one more angle pair for this lesson, and they are alternate exterior angles. So when two lines are cut by a transversal, it's, the pair, it's a pair of angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal, alternate, but outside this time, instead of inside, outside the two lines, then the, that pair of angles is called alternate exterior angles. Here in this diagram, angle and angle two, exterior. Notice how they're both on the outside of the two lines, but, <coughs> but alternate the transversal, so on opposite sides of the transversal. Eight angles eight and angle one also trans are also sorry alternate exterior angles. And just like the alternate interior angles theorem, the altern alternate exterior angles theorem states that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, keyword there parallel 
the resulting alternate exterior angles are congruent. So in this seven are congruent and angle I'm sorry, angle four and angle six are congruent. And that's only if it's only if line L and line K are parallel. So we're going to prove this theorem as well. We're going to start off just like we did in the theorem for the alternate interior angles theorem. Since L and K are parallel, we know that corresponding angles by the corresponding angles postulate you can use that color to, to, that we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. So I go back to my pen, angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent. We also know that by the vertical angle theorem, that angle 5 is congruent to angle 7. So angle 5 and angle 7 are congruent. Now simply by the transitive property, say that angle 1, since it is congruent to angle 5, and angle 5 is congruent to angle 7, that we can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. In the same way that if we had A equals B and B equals C, we could say that A equals C. In this case, angle 1 is A, angle 5 is B, and angle 7 is C. So since angle 1 equals angle 5, and angle 5 equals angle 7, then it has to be true that angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. And you can do that to prove 4 and 6 are congruent using the same method. That's the other pair of alternate exterior angles. So now we know a whole lot more about uh, angles that are formed and pairs of angles that are formed when two lines are cut by a transversal. First, we already knew about corresponding angles. So I got M and M prime here, corresponding angles. And then we found out about vertical angles. So if I had M and Oh, down here. Those are vertical angles. And we also just now learned about alternate interior angles. If I had this angle right here, L prime and N, those are alternate interior angles. You learned about that in the lesson. And last but not least, alternate exterior angles. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching. Make sure you go work on your assignments, review your notes. If you have any trouble, come to live class, ask questions, or reach out to us in the Math Cafe.